Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about sugar cube speakers. Now, I know I've mentioned these in the past, and I talked about them a little bit in my uh, videos on speakers and speaker installations. But today I want to concentrate on these because I've got some new ones to show you, and they offer a lot of options. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've zoomed in here to the uh, top of the workbench, and I've got all this stuff laid out. So let me go through four uh, primary sources that are, that are producing these. Um, some others I'll mention along the way that have one or two as well. But let me go ahead and, and dive into this. So the first one I want to take a look at is um, uh, one that I got from uh, Tony's Train Exchange. And basically they provide these with uh, these stackable uh, plastic uh, elements. So you can stack them up, and if you have room, you can make a nice deep enclosure for your speaker. So that's a great thing. And the nice thing about this is they just slide right down in here, although they don't right necessarily recommend that you, need to, uh, that you need to glue them in place, but I go ahead and do it anyway. I just put a little bit of super glue inside here. There's a little ledge cast in here that the uh, speaker bottoms out on, and so I just put a little super glue down in there to hold it in place, and also to make sure I've got a good airtight seal. So these are a very nice uh, speaker. You can get them from the Tony's Train Exchange from their website. I think they have them in two different sizes. Okay, so that's Tony's Train Exchange. Now let's take a look at uh, what's available from uh, TCS. But they sell these uh, on their website and you can get them from dealers of, of uh, TCS products. Now these are slightly different. You can see they're a little bit smaller uh, than most of these others. Uh, and this one is more um, elongate uh, uh, than it is uh, square. These are, they're all rectangular, but this one is much longer and skinnier. And as you can see, they come with these 3D pr printed enclosures. And in this case, theirs are set up so that instead of uh, the back of it facing out, they have it so that the back is on the inside there. And that uh, helps to protect the, um, the little contacts here, the solder contacts. Um, and th that's a nice feature, I think, too. But it also leaves the, uh, the, the face of the speaker out here where it's subject to damage. And you can see maybe that this one has gotten dinged up a little bit, but it hasn't hurt the, the sound volume. I've tested it. It works fine. And um, they have these in two different sizes, and you can find these on their website. That's uh, tcsdcc.com. And, uh, you know, I've used these in a number of installations, and they work fine. Uh, you know, because of the, the small size, they do work very well. They work great in combinations of, of two as well. So take a look at those. Um, another, another company that is making these available uh, recently is Soundtracks. They have uh, have come on board with their own versions. So you can take a look at theirs on their website and Soundtracks dealers, of course, would have them. Um, I also want to mention that ESU, Loke Sound, uh, is now uh, um, making uh, various combinations of stackable uh, enclosures like this and they provide sugar cube speakers with some of theirs, uh, their decoders, and you can order them separately. So they also offer these stackable uh, enclosure elements. Let's go on to the, uh, the one that I've used the most of over the last five years, I think now, and that's from Streamline Backshop. And, you know, their basic unit is like this here. Uh, this, I think, is about an 11 by 15 speaker. And it, it, it's a very good speaker. I really like this a lot. Uh, I've tried their slightly larger one, and uh, I find this to be a very good uh, compromise in size. And uh, the one thing about theirs is the speaker, you know, comes separate, obviously, from it. And then you have to glue it onto the top of, this, of the enclosure. So you can see on this one, hopefully, I basically just run a bead of, of gel type super glue around the top of the um, top of the enclosure and uh, then place the uh, um, speaker itself right down on that and then once that sets up then I run more around the outside of it to glue it in place and that that works very well and it's you know one thing that uh, Brian Bianca who is the owner of Streamline 
back shot that he has pointed out to me for many years now, for five or six years, that it's very important that you get an airtight seal when you uh, glue these sugar cube speakers in place or install them if they're just a if they're just a slip and fit like on these from Tony's trains because you know it makes a world of difference and he has experimented with using you know super glue with using um, uh, silicone sealant around here with black tape all kinds of things and you know he says that you know, it makes a world of difference if you get a good airtight seal or not and you know he has done a myriad of different configurations of these various uh, enclosures for these so you know they, they've got uh, he's got these doubles that are deep and shallow uh, like this here and singles that are deep and shallow uh, he's got these oddballs that are some experimental designs that use two speakers um, in various configurations I still haven't tried these out haven't found the uh, right uh, placement for those yet another thing that he came up with a couple of years ago was this design that uh, is shaped to fit inside the roof of the cab of a locomotive. And then the uh, sugar cube speaker itself fits down into this little uh, um, area that is indented or set into the, uh, in, into the, the enclosure. So this is all hollow inside, so it gives you a fairly nice area. And it'll fit right inside the, the cab roof of a, of a locomotive diesel or locomotive cabs, uh, steam locomotive cabs. So these are great. I use these a lot now. I've been doing a lot of, of switchers and, and, and uh, Jeep units with these and they do a great job. They put out very good sound. And that's one thing that's true of these sugar cube speakers in general. Um, you know, they're good down to about 400 hertz. Once you get below 400 hertz, they fall off real fast. But, you know, you're down into the, into the base range on that. Uh, also, he offers, in this rounded uh, version, uh, a dual about the same size. Uh, you have to be careful, though, because some cabs are not long enough for this to fit in. And uh, they work very well, though. I've tried these, and they do a good job. He has another one here. So this is the front to back, and this is side to side set up so they'll fit within a cab roof as well. So you can see the, the difference in the thickness, so you'll get much better base, presumably, by using a slightly deeper uh, enclosure. And of course, as I mentioned, you've got these dual uh, square ones, deep and shallow. So these are a great option if you have room in a locomotive, particularly a tender of a locomotive, something like that, uh, or inside of a boiler, maybe, you could fit these in. So these are an interesting option, and um, I still get a lot from, from Brian, and you can find him at uh, sbs4dcc.com, uh, or just Google Streamlined Backshop, and you can find his stuff there. So he has a, a large product line for you. Um, and he has these in several different sizes. He offers uh, these in four different sizes, from very, very small up to... I think it's something like 15 by 18, something along that line. And it can really put out a lot of sound at that rate. Okay, the newest guy in town is this company called Sugar Cube Audio. And um, this fellow is located up in uh, Indiana. And he sells these through uh, his store on eBay. And you can find him there as Sugar Cube Audio 65. That's his store. Or just, you know, do a search for Sugar Cube speakers, and he'll come up, I guarantee it. I did it earlier today, and sure enough, there he was. And what he's done is, uh, he provides several different configurations of these uh, speaker enclosures. They're all 3D printed uh, uh, units. And you can see here, he's got the standard depth uh, single enclosure. And then he's got this one here, and you can see it's got one shallow and one deep on the same uh, casting, or on the same, not casting, but same printed product. And so you can have a deeper um, uh, enclosure for more bass, and then a shallower enclosure if you want a little bit higher frequency sounds. So it's like having a woofer and a tweeter right there next to each other. And then he has a double deep one as well. So you can see that one. Um, 
This is the standard uh, thickness. Well, no, that's that's sort of a thin one, isn't it? All right, it's a little bit thicker than this. So we've got shallow, deep, and intermediate, and uh, here's another thin one. So he sells these in either single or dual configurations, and he's got various uh, combinations of these, and they are, I think they run about $9 uh, with the single uh, speaker and $16 for the dual speaker. So, um, and that includes shipping, by the way. And again, you can find him on eBay. Just do a quick search for that. Uh, most of these, um, you know, something like this, you could fit into a large tender, uh, but you might have trouble fitting that into most diesel locomotives. For the most part, you know, this is going to be your, my standby, if I'm going to draw, uh, use these, would be this one for diesels and probably these here for uh, most HO locomotive tenders, that kind of thing. So these offer uh, some great opportunities for you. Uh, all of these are available in um, 8 ohm, 1 watt, uh, uh, approximately 1 watt uh, ratings. These guys here from TCS are rated at, this one is rated at 0.8 watts, and this one here is rated at 0.7 watts. So they are a little bit lower wattage. Most of the others, though, are rated anywhere from, you know, 0.8 to 1 watt. Um, yeah, so that's something to be aware of when you're installing these in a locomotive. Make sure that you check the wattage uh, rating of the uh, output uh, from the um, sound decoder. For example, some of the soundtracks decoders are putting out 2 watts. And so if you install these in a locomotive with a uh, decoder that's putting out 2 watts, you're probably going to have trouble down the road. Matter of fact, I always, when I install a, uh, a Soundtracks Economy plug-and-play decoder, I always cut the, uh, the sound, the uh, standard sound setting, uh, down to about half volume. So it's normally 255. I'll drop it down to a little over 100. And that immediately, you know, cuts the potential uh, output in half and makes it safe to use these 1 watt uh, speakers with those decoders. And then you can adjust your individual volumes up or down from there. And I found that to work fairly reliably. So, you know, I've been using these, uh, like I said, since early 2015, if I remember correctly. I did a, uh, an Atlas RS1 installation in my uh, DCC corner column uh, in the spring of 2015, if I remember correctly. And I used uh, one of um, uh, one of these, I believe, in that particular one. And, you know, it's running now, still doing great. So um, I really have jumped on the SugarCube bandwagon. And, you know, like I say, these things have made it possible to do sound decoder installations in locomotives that I never even thought I would ever put sound in. So give them a try and uh, hope it works out for you on your next sound installation. Uh, I'll be back... Uh, Next week, uh, hope my camera, one of my Sony cameras, is supposed to be delivered today. So I'm hoping it's going to come in and it's going to work fine. And I'll be able to start using my Sony camera again because uh, I, really like the, uh, I really like the images and the sound quality of the Sony a lot more. Plus, I can use my separate uh, external microphones with shotgun mics and things, my wireless mics. Um, to get much better sound quality. So that's one reason I kind of held off on doing a video on the LEDs simply because uh, I heard that or I received uh, a notice uh, that my uh, camera would be coming back. And I really want to be able to do a much better quality um, video with the uh, LED installation that I want to show you how to do. Um, and we'll get onto that maybe Monday, maybe Friday of next week. I'm not sure which one it's going to be. I hope that gives you some ideas for uh, your next installation. Give some of these SugarCube speakers a try. They really do a nice job on sound and they make it so much easier to install a speaker into a locomotive that, you know, in the past I never would have thought possible. So that's about it for now. Have a great weekend and we'll catch you up uh, on Monday. Uh, be safe in the meantime. Bye now.